here knows David's yeah. testimony. Maybe not very many people know mine. So don't say anything good until I come back. Okay? Huh? Don't say anything good until I come back. Okay. After the rest. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll save the good stuff till I see you back in the room. Let's play some background music. So I'm a, I guess we call a baby Christian. Um, when David went to, about the time David went to jail, I got a call. Actually, the day that Mike went to visit David in jail, I got a call from Mike on the phone, and I saw. I think I, I just answered the phone, and he was like, "I'm a pastor from Calvary Chapel." I'm like. <laughs> okay, like I, it wasn't me. I wasn't there. Um, sorry. <laughs> like totally caught me off guard. Um, but he said I just went to go visit Hubert, and I started laughing in jail. And I'm like, oh, he likes to be called David. Um, he said, you know, I asked him if there was anything I could get him or anything I could do for him, and he said, um, if you could please call my girlfriend because she's struggling too, and see how she's doing. So at that time. Um, they invited me to come to most excellent way. They invited me to come to church. I went. I, I, I still hadn't made the decision to be sober, but I came. And I remember the, that Sunday that I came to church, I heard uh, Pastor Roger talking, and he, he just said, you know, he said, if there's anything here who you feel like you're one of those lost people where you don't belong and you don't have anything solid in your life, repeat these words after me. And I did. And it, at, at the very moment, it didn't feel like anything huge. And I ended up going to jail and sitting, you know, violating probation. And sitting in jail, I just had, I just felt like I was hearing God's voice constantly telling me, there's something better, there's something better. I didn't know what better, what, what he meant or what it was, but I just knew there was something better. And then Mike came to visit me in jail um, a week, I believe, after David had joined the bridge. And he came. And he told me, I don't want to get, I'm going to get all emotional. He told me some things that um, were so true, and they just like struck the core of my very essence. And that was, Amanda, when you when you get out of here, you have a choice. You can go back to the life you were living, but one of two things is going to happen: either you're going to die, or you're going to spend the rest of your life watching someone else raise your daughter. And it, it hit me. People had been convincing me propositioning me to quit using for six years. But for some reason, it just, that struck me like nothing else had. But instead of just leaving me with that, he said, but, but on the flip side of that, you can come and you can have this new life through Christ, and, and he'll take all this away. You'll ne you never have to come back to jail again. This can be your last time in jail. And I said, well, sure. Sounds good. At that point, I'm, anything sounded better than having to, you know, be an addict for the rest of my life. So, bottom line, <laughs> um, I've been out of jail. This month, I'll be celebrating my one-year sobriety. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we, had our, we had our leadership breakfast, and I had, you know, I never even thought I would fit in with anybody here. I, I thought at first, like. Oh boy, I'm going to a Christian recovery. It was hard enough for me to like do the NA thing and you know where people are never mind. But anyway, so I didn't think I didn't think I was gonna fit in with even the people coming, let alone be part of end up being part of leadership or actually being able to help other people with the things that that I I just never thought I'd be free. That's the bottom line. I never thought I'd be free. And just if I could say anything to encourage anybody else in this room is that through Christ all things are possible. You don't have to be anything for the rest of your life. That's all I got.